Suzuki Alto. So this morning I'm going to clean and re-grease the caliper pins, the sliders where the pads go and just generally give it a good clean up. Um, I know I've got one rattly caliper because if I bash the wheel like this, you can hear that rattle, the clonk. And if I go around the other side, this side actually is still okay, it doesn't need doing but I'm going to do it no rattle which shows that the caliper that side actually is still okay I know I need to do the job because I did it um, about four or five months ago but uh, unfortunately I only had copper slip available so I knew that wasn't the ideal stuff and I'd have to clean it off at some point and do them properly um, because obviously copper slip's not very good for the rubber. The, the seals in that are new, so uh, I'm going to give it all a good clean up. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the wheel off. So, if I do that, there you are, you can see what I mean about the caliper not actually seating. So obviously the pins and the pads just need, um, as I said, cleaning and greasing. So, with a 12 millimeter spanner, I'm going to undo both of these caliper bolts. Okay, I might just remove the bottom one first, loosen that one and slide it up, do the bottom pin first, do the pads and then do that one separately. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. So um, I'm just going to undo these. These tighten up I believe to about 27, 27 Newton meters. And I haven't, haven't actually brought my torque wrench with me but um, I'll tighten them up nice and firmly. These bolts are new, I replaced them the last time I did the calipers and normally they come with some Loctite on them built into them but these ones didn't so I use a tiny little bit of blue Loctite just to lock them in position. Just while I'm undoing this you can see there the inside of the caliper pin. That needs to be located so the flats slide into the little groove and that actually lines it up when you put it all back together. It actually lines back up together. Like I say, I have done this job before. There's a the bolt. Okay, pop that down there clean. Now this might need to wriggle. Okay, and I'm just going to lift that up and then I prop it back. Now if it won't stay, I've actually bought a piece of metal. I can just pop round. Just hook it up on the spring just to stop it falling back down in my way. Okay, now at this point, if I was replacing the pads for new ones, I would actually use a caliper, uh, caliper piston tool and I would remove the top off the brake fluid reservoir so that this, when I push the piston back, uh, there's room for the fluid. I'd put a load of rag around it just in case it overspills. Um, I tend to use a proper tool for it, but I have seen people use screwdrivers, but you've got to make sure that this stays square because you don't want to twist it within the block. So I should give this all a good spray with some spray cleaner. I'm going to put a cloth underneath just to catch any rubbish. This is proper brake cleaner here I'm using. I'm just spraying it all round. An old tea towel here. I'm just going to give it a good wipe. I want to clean all the old copper slip off. In fact, it looks like most of it sort of gone anyway in that one wipe. And I'm going to clean it up around there as well. Just get rid of the worst of the dirt. So I'm going to do this pin first. So what I'm going to do. The rubber itself is like a long convoluted rubber 
and there's just like a little ridge it pops over. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and it just pops out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give that a really good wipe. I'm going to take the rubber boot off. And I'm going to give that a really good clean. I'm just going to use a rag to give it a really, really good, good clean like that. I'm also going to clean the inside of the tube because obviously the the other grease is still in there and I don't want that to to damage the rubber which it will do eventually if you're not careful it does sort of tend to perish the rubber so I'll just give it a good clean out I'm also, also going to clean the inside of the slider. I'm going to be very, very careful here. I'm going to put the rag around it. I'm just going to just push inside slightly with the screwdriver. Just goes in a little way. Now obviously, I want to try and get as far into there as I can to get rid of any of the old, old grease. Just so I'd use a caliper pin just to pick it up. And that slides lovely, but it obviously it needs greasing. It's bringing out a lot of the old stuff. Okay, just make sure that's nice and clean. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the pads off now. So I just need to use a screwdriver. Just knock them like that. Now the rear pad is the one with the metal tang. That's the one which actually, uh, when the pads wear down, there's a little bit of metal there. It's quite a long way to go. These have got plenty of meat on them, which runs against the disc and you can hear it'll start ringing, making a scraping noise. So I'm just taking that one off and I'm just gonna give that a really nice clean as well. Again, I think most of the copper stuff's gone. Just sprayed it with some cleaner. Give it another good. Just make sure you don't get any other grease from your hands on the face inside of the pad. That's the bit that actually does the work against the disc. So I'm just going to clean up around the sides as well, where the sliders are. These are the slider bits, which go in these ridges there. And the proper grease to use is called um, red rubber grease, which I'm going to be using on this. I think there are other available as well but you know I've been advised use a red rubber grease it's been really good I'm just going to pull this one out as well and this is the pad on the outer one so again I'm just going to give that a good clean okay and they're the same with these sliders I'm just going to give that a good clean in there Quite a lot of rubbish in there. And I think, to be honest, probably the copper, the copper slip actually was beginning to dry up a little bit. I think copper slip was something they used to use all the time on them, but um, nowadays they recommend the rubber grease because obviously of the damage caused to the rubber if you leave it, and it does, as I found out, does tend to dry up. Right, I'm going to put this bit back together again. So I just need to clean the top one as well. Let's not forget that; would be rather pointless, wouldn't it? that top one is still moving quite a lot it does need to be free but okay right so now they're, they're clean this is my red, red rubber grease I'm going to use now I've wrestled the top of it off okay so I'm going to give this a really good dose in I get various different um, 
people saying that you should use quite a lot on there and others say you should use it sparingly I'm just going to try and use a little bit in the middle effectively I'm just going to stand that down there to make sure it doesn't fall over and I'm going to put this bottom boot on okay now it came off with a longer section this side which goes around that that ridge there Now pop it on like so okay and I'm just going to push the the sliding pin back inside and then you get a nice there we go it's nice and remember as I said there's two flats on there which need to line up with the caliper when you slide it back down so what I want to do I'm going to remove the top one I'm going to do exactly the same with the top one now I won't bore you with that so just bear with me I'll be back in a moment that's the top bolt out. I'll give them a quick wire brush before I put them back in with a new little bit of Loctite on them to lock them in place. So the top caliper is now loose and I've got to put it to the side but I've got it supported because you don't want it dangling on the on the cable so it's quite supported quite nicely there. So again I'm going to do exactly the same again pull out the top pin and do exactly the same as I just said give it a good clean and a grease. So that's the top one done and greased and put back in. I've given it a good white round to make sure there's no grease uh, on the outside where it can get onto the pads or onto the disc itself. So I'm going to replace the pads now. I'm going to do the front one first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some grease on the back of here and I'm going to put some on the edges there on the ears and pop it back into position. Now this can be a little bit fiddly. Again, the same question, how much do I put on here? Some people say you need to put quite a bit on as long as you don't go mad. I will say at this point I've had no formal training as a mechanic so this is just my way of doing it. I have, um, I have actually helped other people do this job on their cars before mechanics. I have actually been there and just been very careful now not to get any on the actual surface of the pad but that just needs to have this as it slides nicely in the in the caliper. A bit off the edge there. Just wipe that off. There's a tiny little bit on the edge. Okay. Just give my gloves a good wipe. I don't want to touch any of the. Right. So making sure the pad is actually on the inside. The ears slot into the little edges there. Now again, it can be a bit fiddly, but that's gone in nice and easy. So they actually slide within the grooves of those sliders. I'll just move the camera around so as you can see that. Have a quick view of that. I think you can see that the actual ears slot up in there and in there as well. I'm now going to put the other side on. So remember, as I said, the pad that goes on the rear is the one with the metal ring. So it sort of comes round and it sticks out to where the pad is. When this all runs down, when that gets that thin, that will touch the disc and it'll start making a noise. That's telling you that the actual pads need replacing. The discs on here, I replaced them um, last year with new pads and discs. And they're fine. It's just that with the car being used the way it is, it uh, does get quite a lot of wear but these these are all fine so again just going to put some grease on the back of the I think the grease on the back is mainly to prevent vibration and a lot of squealing rather than lubrication although you don't want the you don't want the pad sticking to the back of the of the piston right give it on the ears again I shall wipe off any excess before I put it on some on the ears just so as it slides happily within the I just wipe any excess off and so we don't want it we don't want to overdo it okay, give my fingers a good wipe so I don't get any grease on there and again pad facing towards the disc a little bit more awkward this back one which is why I did the other one first 
can, like I say, they can be a little bit fiddly. And with a little bit of persuading, a little bit of fiddling, they do usually pop in okay. There we are. Oh, just pop back out again. There we are. Nothing. Let's make sure they're free to move. Yeah. So they're seated quite nicely. Now remember I said before, if I'd have been replacing the the pads with new ones, the piston would have been pushed back in to the caliper. Um, and the reason for that is to allow room because the new pads would be wider. These are fairly newish still anyway. And the caliper wouldn't go down, so the piston would give adequate clearance. Now this piston should go straight down. The next thing, I'm just going to give these bolts a little bit of a wire brush. As I said, they were new. They normally come with them... Um, with a little bit of Loctite on them, but these didn't. And these were new, genuine Suzuki items. So I just put a tiny little bit of Loctite blue on them. And they do torque up. Um, I think off the top of my head it's 27 Newton metres. But um, I haven't actually got my torque wrench with me here, but I'll do that when I get home. I'm just literally round on my neighbour's drive because he's gone to work and it's an open drive and it's flatter than mine, so it just makes it easier to work on. So right, so I'm just going to... Just going to unhook that. Make sure that whatever you use to hook it up with, you take it back off. You don't want that floating around. So I'm just going to locate the caliper back in place. And I'm just going to drop a light little drop of. I don't want to go mad with it. Top one's a little bit awkward because it's got a... So getting the bolts in, they can be a little bit fiddly, just be careful you don't cross thread them. Just pop it in and just tighten them up gently. If there's any any force needed, then obviously they're cross threaded. Do not tighten them up if that's the case. These are quite loose, they're just a little bit too tight for fingers. Just doing that nice and gently. I'll pop the bottom one in as well, just to line it up. And just to make sure. And again, just make sure that caliper pin is lined up at the bottom as well, so as the caliper sits back on its, on its mountings properly. A bit of a slow process this, but I'd rather be slow and safe and sorry. Right, so they're now tightening quite nicely. Now I'm not going to heave on this. I'm just going to give them a nice gentle bit of pressure just to tighten them up. There we go. Okay. Now that is only moving because they're not rattling now, that is only moving because I'm pushing it. The pins are sliding properly now, but it's not rattling as such. So that's that side done. So I'm going to put the wheel back on. Uh, before I move the car to do the other side, I'm going to make sure that I press the brake pedal three or four times to pump the system back up again. Otherwise you'll press the brake pedal and it'll go right down and you won't be able to stop. So I'm just going to um, put the wheel back on and I'm going to do the next side. Remember what I said, I'm not a mechanic. This is how I do the job. If you do decide to have a go at doing this yourself, although you can see what's involved, I'm not saying that everything I do is correct, but I've never had a problem doing it before, and I have actually um, sort of been guided by mechanics in the past. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you sometime in another video. Thank you. Bye. Wow, just been for a test drive, and what a difference that makes. And just to prove it, no clonking. So there we go, job well done.